all our spooky friends who've joined us for another live episode of the Scariest Podcast for our weekly storytime episodes. Woo! That was a pretty good yeah, intro. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I'm really happy with that one. Uh, so, uh, blah, blah, blah. Who are we? I'm Robin Grace, and this is uh, Adam Diaz. Hello. And we're going to read your homegrown horrors that you guys have sent us, which are your paranormal act. Activities, activities your paranormal experiences any like emotional ones scary ones creepy ones i will uh, say if there's any ghosts that listen to our podcast that can actually send an email or tweet or whatever we would like to know about your paranormal activities <laughs> i want to know what's going on from your side um but yeah that's definitely right so if you guys want to send us your particular homegrown whores you can reach out to storytime at scaryish.com that's our email address you can also go to facebook.com slash scaryish podcast you can message us from there you can also join the group the scaryish spooky friends group yes uh you can also go to twitter at scaryish pod is a good way to get a hold of us you can go to discord the link should be working it's uh at or just go to scaryish.com and the discord link should be on the right hand there's side there's a of the lot page. of links on the website actually like links to my etsy where you can get scariest merch this is true um and those those aren't ways you can reach out to us no With, it's you just, can put in an order links. and then like a special request put your ghost story i guess if you really wanted to no but just saying it's out there there's a lot of stuff up on scariest.com which will hopefully be going uh, under a revamp soon so lots of stuff in the works it's been a very busy day been a very stressful day uh and i'm glad we're on the air this is yeah. actually the most like relieving part of the day is like when we're actually on the air so r2p217 oh, just, just subscribe on Twitch. thank, thank you, you so, so much. much we appreciate that um yeah today's been really stressful uh lots of running back and forth i ran to work did a bunch of work uh, then ran to tutoring for statics because my brain can't handle the engineering, apparently. Everyone who's ever said statics is easy because everything equals zero, you are wrong. Because I've looked at that homework, and it's not easy, and everything doesn't equal zero. It, I just... So I ran to tutoring, did tutoring for two hours, then ran home, was like, let me chow down on my food, and then was like, I gotta put makeup on and get ready to do too. this stuff. Oh, thanks. It looks like shit, but thank you. No, it looks good. Um... And now we're here. So uh, Adam made coffee. So we have yes. coffee. I have my cute little kitty mug. It's so cute. Okay. I hate you. Um, so and- halfway through this, we're going to be completely wired is what she's really saying. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead, I think, and get started with the first one then. Uh, did you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Why don't you go first? Because I went first yesterday. So yeah. I'm going to go first. Uh, and my first one is called Scariest Story with a question mark. And it starts out like this. Uh, hello, Robin and Adam. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Susan from Poland. You almost missed that, by the way, Robin. Like, you were just deeply engrossed in what you were doing over there, and I was just staring at you. Uh, From Poland? That's crazy. Yeah, I'm Susan from Poland, but I'm living in Ireland. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I found your podcast through, surprise, surprise, Spotify. Shout out to Spotify. I had a lot of fucking problems with Spotify this past week with reporting not working. I went back and forth with a bunch of people. I bitched about it in our Discord channel and the mental health channel because I was losing my mind. And after being told repeatedly, no, you're wrong. There's nothing wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Then eventually I got sent an email, which was like a blast to all people that had like, an, that was an artist through Spotify. And it was basically like, oh yeah, there's something wrong with the numbers. And then Libsyn, who hosts us as well, like message us i was like there's something wrong with the numbers it's like i've been trying to tell you guys this for 48 fucking hours but they got it fixed so hooray for that but anyway shout out to spotify (laughs) Uh, i'm currently listening to the podcast on the plane from poland to italy as i'm on holiday that's pretty fucking awesome so i like that calling it on holiday yeah obviously they're from (laughs) europe and and not from here because we just call it vacation which just sounds kind of lame it doesn't sound as classy do they say vacation like no man you go on holiday so what do they use vacation for? Anything in particular? Okay, I don't know. We'll find that out later from someone who eventually will message us. <laughs> when I was staying, so when I was staying in Poland with my granny, we went to her summer home with my dog. In parentheses, I attached photos of both my dog and the house. Awesome. Uh, the house is unfortunately very old, as my granny moved moved it from another plot of land to where it is now. I didn't know you could move a whole house. Um, on the first night staying there, I was sleeping in the bedroom and my granny, I was sleeping in my bedroom and my granny was sleeping on the couch in the sitting room. She said that she always sleeps there because the couch is comfier. My stupid self decided to listen to your podcast at night. So my mind was already paranoid. I'm glad you disclosed that because sometimes you get in a paranoid mood and you're not like feeling great about stuff and then you start seeing shit. Yeah. So after, I know I had a lot of people reach out like, man, that. Amityville horror one you guys just did fucked yeah, my shit up. Yeah, we are so glad that I am so, so many glad of you, you were it. terrified, uh, but I am glad you guys enjoyed it. Truth yeah, be told, it's it's awesome. We love getting that feedback where it's like, yes, we hit the mark. We did a good episode. Yeah, 
Uh, very, very nice feels. It is. It's rewarding. And a lot of times, too, and it's just an anomaly, we get really good feedback on specific episodes that tend to not do well in downloads. It's like there's like a four-week lull in download numbers for us where every fourth week, it's just a little bit of a dip. And no matter what it happens, it's just because people are busy around that time. And then eventually they catch up and we see a spike in like off days that aren't release days. This doesn't matter to you guys. But the episodes that have the dip, you guys usually reach out to us. And you're like, wow, that's a really good episode. And it's like you're feeling a little bit depressed because your numbers weren't as good. And yeah. then you get that and you're like, wow, now I feel good. Now, even if it's not good, even if the numbers aren't great, I'm going to keep going. So thank you guys. It really means a lot. So after a while, I decided it's time to sleep. So I turned off the light and my phone. I was half unconscious when I heard some footsteps in the attic above me. I didn't think much of it as I was tired and fell asleep right after. So you're like, I might get murdered, but mm, whatever. That's hilarious. I mean, sometimes you're just really tired. Uh, I woke up in the morning and remembered about what happened the night before. I freaked out and went and asked my grandmother if she had heard. I said grandmother. She said granny. uh, If she heard what I did, which she didn't. I played it off as a joke, but my granny said it might be some sort of animal. But in my opinion, they were heavy human footsteps. Oh, my God. I will say I've had a raccoon in my attic. I've mentioned it before. And it's still loud as fuck, even when it's a small animal. Really? Yeah, they're just heavy footed. I think. I don't know. It could still have been a person or a ghost. Are you sure it wasn't just a really fat raccoon? It probably was that, too. But I mean, rolling around up there. A person is a lot bigger than a raccoon. Let's just say I slept with my granny the rest of my stay and I'm almost 16. I didn't hear it all. I didn't hear it at all since that night, thankfully, and I hope not to hear it again. I would love to hear what you guys think about this, and you can totally share this on the podcast. Thank you guys for making my day a bit more scary and fun. Love you guys, Susan. Aw, thank you so much, Susan. Thank and you for sending that we in. We hope you're enjoying living in Ireland. Yeah. I don't know how different it is from Poland, but that's pretty cool. Well, like I will say, um, I, I kind of just said it, but there's a lot of times where you hear stuff like that, and it definitely could just be an animal that's really heavy-footed. Because, like I, like I said, raccoons are fairly small. Robin says they can be, like, huge. I can say you hilarious. Know. I don't know. I've Chubby seen, raccoons. I've seen huge raccoons, and they get about as big as a dog at most, like a big dog, like a Labrador. Yeah. But, like, even then, you wouldn't think that it would sound as loud as a human, but it, it sometimes can. That said... I don't know. If it sounds like human footsteps, like raccoons kind of shuffle. Anything that's like four-legged will shuffle more and have more footsteps than a human, obviously, because it has double the feet or paws right. or what the fuck ever. Right. Or cloven hooves from the demon crawling above oh you. Oh, my God. Big, the pig yeah, demon the thing. the pig demon thing from this episode, <laughs> Jody. It was probably just Jody in your attic, so no big deal. You've moved now. You're in a different country, so you should be safe. Yeah. I think a good transition that we can make pretty fast to these contests that we've been talking about so for any of you guys who have actually paid attention to the things we say, because I think you guys pay attention to the things we say more than we do sometimes, mm-hmm. we did mention that the contest that we we're running where you guys can share it, you guys can like it, and then you guys can comment a friend so they can like get addicted to us, hopefully. Yeah. Um, that one was supposed to run from September 5th through October 5th, and we said we were going to announce the winner live tonight on air. We that realize said, it's not October It's not October 5th. 5th it's <laughs> October 3rd. So we're going to wait to do that. But we're still going to do the main Twitch giveaway thingy yeah 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 those will still come tonight so. uh okay so moving on i guess i'll do my story now beep boop okay so this one goes hi robin and adam hello uh hello i was sipping coffee i apologize um i've been enjoying your podcast for about three months now at work it Aww. definitely makes the work day suck less which is good uh i binged it and i'm excited that i'm all caught up and super excited you guys are doing live shows now oh thank, thank you. you i will say this too um, if someone were to email us because sometimes we do get really negative feedback but if someone were to email us and be like you make my work day even worse i don't know why i listen to you but i keep listening to you and my work day gets so much worse by doing it i'd feel a little bit bad because work sucks. yeah but like you keep listening to us and then you keep making your work day worse. Some people like to punish themselves. Don't judge people. That's my that just might be what they into. It's like that, that dude might just from, be what uh, they're into. That's the Angels better way and to demons say or whatever that I was thinking is. like the red room type shit. Oh. Yeah. So okay. I figured you'd go there first because you're such a big fan of those movies. Yeah. All right. Guess not. Cool. Mm, Let's keep going. Okay. So thanks for all you do for us spooky friends. Thank you. Um you're this welcome. one is from I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to back up now and tell you who this email is actually from. Oh, from from Laura. Okay. So, uh, anyway, I'll get right into my creepy experience, question mark, encounter, question mark. Um, Experience slash encounter, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what uh, to call it, honestly. All I know is no one in my family believes me. 
good thing we're here. Yeah, um, it was probably around eight or nine when I started to notice weird and creepy things, like non-existent people opening the blinds inside the house, feeling like something's walking directly behind me, and seeing movement from the corner of my room. That's what I hate. When you see movement out of the corner of your eye, it freaks right. me out. I hate the feeling like I'm being watched or followed because I don't normally, I'm like not normally a paranoid person. So if that crops up, I'm like, there has to be something around me. And then you look around, there's fucking nothing. And it's just so eerie. It's such a creepy feeling. It sends chills up your spine and you're yeah. like, I'm totally alone, but I, I feel like I'm being watched right now. Right. My parents quickly dismissed it, but my sister experienced a few small, unexplainable things around the house. But this particular incident was more extreme than any other unexplainable occurrence. Um, I experienced it alone, and I don't feel like my family members think it was more than just a bad dream. I know in the deepest fiber of my being, it actually happened, and it wasn't a dream. To better understand how this played out, I'll explain the layout of the bedrooms. Cool. I don't well, know. I, I watch kinda... a lot of HGTV, so yeah. that works for me. Uh, yeah, we're talking about a three-bedroom, 2.5 bath. Is there a powder room? Open like, what's concept. Going on here? Like... <laughs> yeah, are we going to have to clear out these walls? Uh, are they load-bearing? My bedroom is directly across the hall from the bathroom. So if you look out my bedroom door, you will see your reflection in the bathroom mm-hmm. mirror. That is horrible. It's a bad idea. Unless yeah. this is the only time mirrors work like that, you can be in the bathroom and pooping or just sitting. And through the mirror, you can see your TV. Hey, yeah, just saying cool. that works out really fucking well. I like being in the bathroom, being able to see you in the office. That's uh, it's creepy. That angle is not perfect for that, though. You always yell from the bathroom anyways. Yeah. The most common um, thing I hear is we watch something scary or we do the show and then she'll go to the bathroom and she'll be like, come with me. And I'm like, come on, man. This The bathroom is not haunted. Like, everything's going to be fine. You don't know that. I don't know that. I just don't want to get um, up. Okay. So, my mom and dad were home cleaning up in the kitchen and our golden retriever, Gabriel, and our shepherd, Mutt Ginger, were lounging in my parents' room, which is diagonal to the left of my door. The laundry room that leads out to the garage is at the end of the hallway. It was midday on a Saturday. I was probably about 11 or 12 by then. I was picking up my room because, quite honestly, it was always a pigsty. I had an armful of clothes. Was it a demon pigsty? Oh, call back to Jody. Keep going. I had an armful of clothes (laughs) that I was walking with towards the laundry room me being the type who follows the one trip rule could barely (laughs) see over the top of this pile of clothes i started to fumble and dropped some of my clothes as i started to bend down to pick up my failed attempt at one trip i bent all the way down and grabbed a sock close to the bottom right of my door frame i looked at the ground directly on the other side of my door and saw a black leathery humanish foot that's super fun. It had creepy. long pointed claws instead of toenails. The joints of the foot and toes were gnarled and bumpy. I dropped all my clothes, let out a quick gasp, and looked up very quickly to see if there was something on the other side of my door. I looked out my door at the bathroom mirror to see the reflection of the other side of my door frame. I didn't see anything. My dogs ran towards my room from my parents' room and stopped suddenly before they got three feet away from my door. They both lowered their heads and ears and swiftly returned to my parents' room. Abandoners! <laughs> That's so funny. They're like, we got oh up Oh my for God, this. what horrible dicks. <laughs> okay. I remember it extremely vividly. I remember the gut-wrenching feeling of despair and terror as I sat in my room and sat in fear. I have no idea what it was or what I saw, but I do know it was 100% real and scared me so much I didn't leave my room until the next day. I hope it, I didn't bounce around too much. I think it's fine. No, you did I think a good you did job. really well, actually. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for producing an awesome podcast. Keep doing what you do. Love, Laura. Well, thank you, Laura. Thank you we so much. We appreciate you sending that experience and saying those nice things. And that really sucks that there's a clawed toad demon that lives outside of your door, especially when you're trying to do laundry. The first thing that ran through my head is cleanliness is next to godliness and maybe when you leave your room a pigsty it attracts bad things at least that's what i'm going to tell my kids to terrify them it's smart to tell your kids i know it's really really smart because they'll hear that phrase later in life from other people and they'll be like this is why my dad says there's pig demons in my room wow just saying it's smart but that's super fucking creepy if you see a foot on the other side of the door it reminds me of signs when he like looks down under the door with the knife yeah and then the hand comes after him yeah yeah that's the part that of that movie that freaked me the fuck out there's I a couple really parts like of that movie that actually, i think signs is all right i just had high expectations for it and they didn't 
like it didn't quite meet the expectations that I had. I watched it in a very scary setting, so I think that amplified like my fear from it. And plus, I had a cornfield in my backyard, so that didn't, oh, that, didn't help that at makes all. sense. I like the Charlie Sheen version. The Scream 4 version? Yeah. I, never, <laughs> I think it was Scream 3, actually. I didn't watch after Scream 1. I actually really liked... Or no, it was not Scream. It was Scary Movie. Scary Movie. That's I actually what really I mean. liked Scary, Scary movie, movie 1, but I didn't see any of the sequels after um, that. Scary Movie 3, I just remembered because the opening... Um, like the three turns and turns into like a set of boobs. Wow. <laughs> so... Uh, so ingenious, just, <laughs> these guys. <laughs> I just think they're so funny. I think uh, Anna Ferris, Anna Ferris, is hilarious. <laughs> okay, so... Your turn. Read things. Go. Okay. So this next one from me, or for me, this isn't from me. I didn't write this. I don't write these. I don't send these to myself. I don't have the time. Um, actually, I probably do, but I'm just not creative enough to make up this stuff that you guys send us. Uh, is called Scariest Stories, and it is from someone named Brenna. I know that because of this following line. Hello, Adam and Robin. My name is Brenna. Hello, Brenna. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, Adam's awkward. Yes, always. Uh, I'm a big fan of the podcast. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate that. I found your podcast on Spotify. Shout out to Spotify. I won't give you my I hate Spotify story again. Uh, actually, don't. They just annoy me. Uh, and I eagerly await each episode. And just saying, in all caps, and she made the letters red. They made the letters red. I don't know. Uh, you can share this on the pod. I appreciate that going in the front. A lot of times it's at the end of them. Yeah, I'm really so. glad it's in red, too, because it's just like... There. It's eye catching. I try and skim it as much for that sentence without spoiling it for myself whenever we're about to read these. Uh, here are the two stories I will share. Both of these are kind of short uh, and they've been titled. And the first one is called The Haunted Toilet, which just reminds me of like what Robin thinks is going to happen every time she goes to the bathroom after we watch her. I, okay, you know what? I've watched enough scary movies, en- enough horror movies where there's always something on the other side of that shower curtain mm-hmm. or there's always something in your mirror. Or you shut the, or you walk into the room, whatever, and the door slams shut and you're stuck in there and you get fucking murdered. Just take all the doors off the hinges, then you're fine. Then you live in the house like in The Conjuring 4, where you, you know, can't close the door when the demon's out in the dark hallway. I like hallway. having personal space. Okay. Do you? You like having personal space. You don't like other people having personal space. No. You'll open bathroom doors when people are pooping to ask questions and then just leave it open. You're welcome. It's 100% true. <laughs> it's so annoying. Okay, okay, let's get back to the haunted toilet. Uh, okay, so I'm on the swim team, and the high school slash pool, and the high school pool that I practice at is pretty old. Uh, actually, not actually not. So I guess it's not old. Uh, that spot where the high school is was previously the middle school. Then the high school was built on the foundations in 1985. So there's been a school there since 1972. Okay. Interesting. So a couple weeks ago, I was at practice and I needed to use my inhaler. I was using it, and then the toilet in the third stall started flushing. Can you guess how many times it flushed? Five? No. Two? No. Three? Yes. I think six would be a bit creepier, too. That's where my head went. Oh, okay. Um, It's safe to say that I was pretty rattled. Did I say that I was alone when it happened? Uh, I think you didn't mention that, but I just kind of imagined that. Half an hour later, I was alone in the locker room again because I was the only girl in the locker room again. That's how being alone works, I think. Uh, I was hoping that the toilet wouldn't start to flush again. It did, and I got out of there as fast as I could. I hate that. We have our our like light in our loft flickering now, on yeah. and off. And, and I went in there today, and I was like looking through games, thinking like maybe I'd trade something into GameStop because I'm gonna get Mario Party on Friday. Super fucking excited, thinking about streaming it to Scaryish's Twitch because nothing scarier than two people that have a friendship or a relationship playing that game together. Because that, that's fucking intense shit. But anyway, oh, my sister is not here. I'd love to play with her. I mean, it's not like she's not coming back. No, I know, but it's gonna be like a whole month. That's fine. I mean, she's having fun in Vietnam. Shout out to Liz. Have fun in Vietnam, Liz. Um, but anyways, I was in there and my fucking Xbox turned on by itself. Just turned on. I wasn't anywhere near the fucking thing. It made the noise, turned on my TV and everything. I just like looked over. I'm like, either the fucking electric in this room is terrible or there's a demon in this loft. Which sucks because it's an open loft. It's not closed off at all like yeah. most lofts are. So, okay, let's get back to the story. Uh, also, shout out to uh, Kinetic Aesthetic who just followed us on Twitch. We appreciate Kinetic? that. Kinetic, whatever. <laughs> You can read those then. Fine. Fudge you. Um, I was hoping that the toilet wouldn't start to flush again when we got there. It did, and I got out of there as fast as I could. I told my friend, let's call him Jim, what had happened. Jim was slightly skeptical, but went with it. At that point, I was so scared that my whole body was shaking as if I was my own personal earthquake. It's a really good sentence. I really like that sentence, actually. Yeah. Uh, The week after that, there was one girl, there was one other girl in the locker room with me. We finished up around the same time, me being done first. My friend was putting her towel in her bag when I left and closed the door. Then the day after, she told me that when I closed the door, a toilet flushed on its own. 
We were the only ones in there that day. Oh, my God. Sounds I, like a haunted toilet. That's a really good title for that, or actually. The, to- the bathroom just re- needs a really, really good plumber. Something's going on. That could be. It's just weird because, like, the flushing mechanism is hard to do on its own because, like, how toilets work is they have the plunger that's covering the water. You know what I mean? And if it's, like, runny toilet, it doesn't just flush no, all the way. No, but what if it's, like, one of those sensor toilets where something's wrong with the sensor and it just keeps sensing someone. I can't imagine having a sensor toilet in my high school. Like, we just had a trough. We had a hole in the ground that we all pissed and shit in. Like, the entire school. I'm kidding. That didn't happen at all. We just didn't have sensor toilets. That just seems like a luxury that wouldn't happen. In a high school, at least. Maybe I'm crazy. I'm 33. That was a long time ago for me. Aw, so. Miss Deezy subscribed. Thank Again, you, Deezy. Thank you. We appreciate it. Actually, yeah, every... Uh, Every month you have to resubscribe. So for anyone who's subscribed in the past, uh, you're gonna have to resubscribe again every month if you didn't know that about Twitch. So we appreciate you, yeah. Miss Daisy, for subscribing again. Um, and uh, no, I don't remember. I it's been so long since I was in high school. It's been twelve years. Twelve years. It's been fifteen years for me. Two thousand three. Uh, yeah, it's been fifteen years since the year I graduated. I don't know how I feel about this. But um, I don't even remember what my toilets were like. Legit. Like, I don't... I My school was brand new when I got there. And it. I just... But that was 12 years ago. So now it's like 12 years old. My high school was over 100 years old. And then we moved to a brand new high school. And uh, that place was okay. It just didn't have a bunch of the stuff it was supposed to. But it had just regular toilets. So. Well, I guess technically my first high school was that old too. Huh. Cool. Right. So there's one more story in this email, so I'm going to get to it. Okay, go. This one is called The Fox Farm. Uh, up here in Alaska, where I live, what's the ooh for? I love foxes. I do too. Wait, why are you farming them? <gasps> no. Uh, let's just move forward. Uh, up here in Alaska, <laughs> where I live, uh, there are two great big islands called Kodiak Island and Af- Afgonak, A-F-G-O-N-A-K Island. Uh, you might have heard of them. I've definitely heard of Kodiak Island. Uh, anyways, one of my father's friends was taking a trip down there to fish for who knows what. I'm going to guess fish. That's my guess. Maybe Loch Ness Monsters, though. Whales. Whales? God, I hope not. That's horrible. <laughs> it wasn't... <laughs> what is wrong with you? You think Fox They're Farm... They're already murdering foxes, You think Fox right? Farm is where you, like, raise and murder foxes, and this guy's yeah. going fishing, so you assume whales. Well, where... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know. When I see... Uh, when I hear Fox Farm, I think... Like you're raising the foxes to cut off their tails to make like the t- tail charms. I sure hope not. You know? Well, let's see what's going on here. Uh, this fishing trip. It was an overnighter on his boat, and his dad was asleep. So the friend, let's call him Bob, was slowly driving the boat past the abandoned fox farm. A little okay, backstory on the farm. So here we go. Here's your answers. Okay. There was a small fox farm on an island near Kodiak City. The family had a daughter who fell ill and died, and the family abandoned the house soon after. Back to the story. So nothing on the foxes. We don't know what's going just, on with the foxes there, but that's what we I know. just want to know that they're okay. Okay. Back to the story. So Bob was steering past the farm, and he happened to notice a light on the second floor of the house moving around. Bob woke up his dad and told him to look at the house, and his dad saw it too. Little did they know that the second floor had collapsed years ago. That is super fucking creepy. It still could be someone scooby doing up there just fucking around on the second floor remnants, though. It's true. Uh, well, that's it for this email. Thanks for creating the podcast. Please forgive any errors. I have a tendency to capitalize random words. Smiley face. Don't even worry about it. It was actually really, really good, and it was really well written. So yeah. I appreciate you sending it in. I think Robin does, too. Yeah. So for that second one. I really one, appreciate it. I think it's far more likely some kid was doing what I used to do when I was a kid, and that's going through abandoned places with a flashlight. And, like, I've climbed over beams and done stupid shit where I probably could have died and then wound up, you know, getting lucky and not dying. So that is more likely, but that doesn't mean it wasn't some creepier shit. So thank you for sending that in, though. We do appreciate it. (laughs) Right on. Do you want to move on to your next story? Uh, Yeah. Okay. So this one goes, uh, it's from Crystal, and it goes, so I've been wanting to tell you a story, but I have so many, I don't know which one to send you first. But today I listened to the episode you put out, and this basically ties in perfect with it. Uh, please feel free to share if you want. It's scary-ish. Uh, so I don't know July, what episode. I was going to yeah. say, this is from July something, July 27th, it looks yeah. like. So I'm not sure what episode that was. But hopefully, through the context clues of the email, we can all figure it out together. Right. So uh, it goes, so back in February, we moved to this small studio cabana tucked away in the mountains uh, on the windward side of Oahu. Uh, once you pass the normal neighborhood where houses are right next to each other, you keep driving up to where the houses start to spread out more. And eventually you get to the houses that are just tucked away in the back in the jungle. 
Um, <laughs> that's where we live. And I love it here. And if you guys have never been to Hawaii, it's so pretty and so green, especially when you get into like the tree covered area. I'm just told that um, I'm not allowed to go. Never. You don't want to go back. I'm never going back. Um, it's a small town. Apparently okay? it's beautiful and uh, I can never see it. So no, you'll never see it. Okay. Uh, maybe one day. Maybe. Uh, anyway, sounds nice. It's beautiful, but it's also pitch black at night and the walls are paper thin. So anytime someone walks up to the house, the dogs immediately begin to bark our very own alarm system, <laughs> uh, which as Furry you know, alarm systems are the best, which as you know, can be good or creepy. Uh, this is very true when they bark at nothing or they lose their shit and you can't find anything. That's the it worst. It freaks me out. Uh, yeah, it freaks her out. She tells me to go investigate, and then she sits and freaks out well, about I'm it. Well, I'm like, do you want to take the dog? If I hear something, I'm like, do you want to take the dog with you? If the dog didn't um, wake up, I never take the dog with me, because I'm like, no, no, no. It's good. The dog would have woken up if something serious was going on. Uh, also, it rains a lot in this area, despite the fact that you can drive five minutes down the road, and there will be no more rain and sun's out. Well, one Friday night in May, I had to work late. So when my husband called and asked if I wanted to go to a rave with him and our friends, I told him I was tired and that I'd pass. I told him I was okay with him going without me and that I'd go home and probably pass out anyway. Uh, when I got home, I got comfy and called my parents on the mainland so we could FaceTime. Um, BT dubs, when people say mainland, it just means like... We, we know. Okay. The continental, continental United United States. U.S. Mainlanders you, know what the mainland you means. You say you know what the mainland means, but working in hospitality, I've worked front desk before, and people have been like, oh, we're from the United States. We're from the mainland, the United States, and we're like... It's because they think that like state. the states have to be touching for them to be considered the United States, because well, people... They, are fucking idiots. Well, they think Alaska's a state, don't they? I don't know. They probably said the same shit in Alaska. They're probably like, we're from the United States. Oh. You guys are just part of America. I don't know. I don't I've know. heard some really stupid shit fall out of people's mouths, especially in like the last week. But uh, yeah, that's just going to happen when you're surrounded by a bunch yeah. of like random humans you don't know. Um, I miss Hawaii sometimes, but not all the time. Just don't even talk about it. It just makes me mad um, now. Well, it must have been around 8 to 9 p.m. Hawaii time. I'm home alone, sort of. I had a uh, my three fur babies. It was rainy outside, like always, when my family FaceTiming got interrupted by my dogs getting up and barking at the door. Normally, I can hear my neighbors walking up the side pathway or up the driveway. We all share the same walkway into the units. Hate and that. I hate it. I hate shared walkways. I hate shared pathways. Really? Drives me nuts. It's my least favorite part about apartments. Is like someone you don't know if someone's walking to your place or if they're walking to the like the place next to yours or if they're just creepy and they're just walking on the sidewalk of an apartment they don't live in. Oh, Fucking that's hate true. it because you have to see strangers all the time walk past your place and get like four feet from your door. I cannot stand that shit. Just bothers me. I'm so glad I'm not in an apartment right now. Okay. Um. And since it's not unusual to hear them walking by, um, or for our dogs to bark as they walked by, I figured it was just one of them. Then there were two knocks at the door. You're alone. Your dogs are going crazy. You didn't hear anyone walking, and you hear two knocks on the door. That's creepy. It'd be worse if it were three. I was going to say, and then the knock three times um, song plays. My dad was watching me through the camera and asked why were the dogs barking. I told him someone was at the door, so I yelled out from across the room or house, Ryan, no answer, Rich, no answer. Those were their neighbors. Um, I freaked out a little, walked up to the door, hesitated to open it, then just decided to lock it. Oh my gosh, it was unlocked? That's super creepy. That's super creepy. My door is always scary. locked. That's something I used to do when um, I was younger, man. That was a, like a small town mindset. No, no, no. A small town mindset of like, leave your door open. Oh, no. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, door's always open, bro. Come over whenever you want. Like, I used to say that shit to people, and then guess what happened? My fucking house got robbed. And then <gasps> You're after kidding! that, no, I've told you the story a million times. I don't remember it. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, they ripped the air conditioning unit out of my window, even though the front door was open. Then they came in through the window, stole my Xbox. Oh, in your apartment. In my that apartment. That shitty apartment. I mean, it was a house that I was renting. But yeah, like they stole my Xbox. I and mean, this is what the best part of this whole thing is. There was a $1,400 camera next to it, a DSLR I'd gotten for graduation. And they left that because they were so dumb, they had no idea that that was worth much more than like a $200 Xbox. 
It was just fucking bizarre. And what's really people got priorities. You want to know what's really crazy about this whole thing? So I was just like so pissed about that. I called the cops the next day. They came. They're like, "What else is missing?" I'm like, "Nothing. Just the air conditioner." I don't. I wasn't playing my Xbox at the time. So when I went to move out of the place like seven months later and move out to the West Coast, I was packing my shit up. I'm like, "Where the fuck's my Xbox?" And then it occurred to me like, I haven't seen it here. They fucking took it, and I was so goddamn mad when I realized they fucking stole from me. I'm Thank so sorry. Thank you so sorry. much to, uh, you can say that. Kinetic Aesthetic. Thank you, Kinetic that Aesthetic, for donating 1,000 cheers to us. We really appreciate That's it. It's such a good name. It really is. But I, let me finish this story because this is like how this life works sometimes. So I used to tell people to come in, blah, 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 got stolen from. Super pissed, moved out here. I was sitting around. I was. I didn't have very much money. Um, and the message from Kinetic Aesthetic is love you guys. Thank you so much. We love you too. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, I will say this though. This is what's so crazy. I was like, I still have these cords for my Xbox, but no Xbox. So I drove down to GameStop and I was like, can I trade this in for cash? Because I don't even have an Xbox anymore. And the person there was like, no, you can't, but you can trade it in for store credit. So I did. And I was like, well, I guess I have to go back now and buy something later. So eventually I wound up going down to that GameStop a few more times and I wound up getting hired there. And that's the place I met Robin. Yeah. That's 100% true. Had my apartment or my house or whatever had not been broken into, I might not have ever met her. So really? it's weird how things work out like that. That's 100% true. Like, that's why I started going to that GameStop was because I wanted to get cash. <laughs> okay. So I freaked out a little, walked up to the door, hesitated to open it, decided to lock it. Since my family was on the phone, I decided to shake this off and go back to talking to my family. After I got off the phone, I was thinking about how weird that was and if maybe there was a logical explanation, but I couldn't think of anything. Early the next morning, while me and my husband were still in bed, I told him what happened. He asked me what time that was around, and I told him. He paused, and then he told me that late last night he got a message from back home that his grandpa, who had been very ill for the last year, had passed away. Wow. Either that was a weird coincidence, or maybe his grandpa wanted to say goodbye to us. I'll never know. Oh, I have and to, like, And you locked them out? I no, know. I'm kidding. I'm not trying to make uh, you feel bad. That is super sad, that though. That is super sad. Um, I never met him and wondered if that was him. Uh, could he have just gone to our house because of our energy since my husband wasn't there at the time? Was it something else entirely? And I'm lucky I didn't open the door? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Honestly, like... Uh, if you're looking at, like, the rational human aspect of it, it's probably more likely there was something else at your door that night. Maybe that bad feeling that you had. Do they peepholes or windows or... I don't know. I don't know. Um, either way, that's... It could have been anything. Yeah, it really so, could have been. Erring on the side first. of caution is never a bad thing. Yes, yeah, safety first. Um, they say in Hawaiian folklore that if you get a knock at the door and when you open it, you see a butterfly, that means you had a visit from a loved one who had passed away. We've heard that before. Yes. Also, they say if you have a spontaneous floral scent pass by out of nowhere, it's a visit from a loved one who's passed. Hmm. Either way, at the time, I wasn't trying to sniff the air or look for no <laughs> butterflies in the dark. <laughs> I guarantee you at least one person after they hear this, the next time something creepy happens to them is going to be like... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, if I sniffed because like something creepy happened and it smelled like farts, that would be more likely that it was one of my relatives visiting me because they are a flatulent bunch, just saying. You're a flatulent bunch. Thank you so much. I edit um, them all out so you guys don't have to hear them. I am yet to fire one off during a live show. But I always consider doing it just to see what kind of reaction it would get. But I don't know. I think it, you would just power through it. You might freak the fuck out and you might just keep going. I would just be like, are you kidding me? Continue. She would spaz out. Um. Okay. So anyway, this seems to be a super relatable story. So thought I would share. I read and heard stories of people who do open the door. And honestly, hell nah. That's, That's literally how it's felt. Hell, hell nah. nah. Um, or nah. Uh, I like nah. Yeah. No, sounds good. They are brave because I did a nervous laugh, locked the door, and just hope for the best. <laughs> I love your podcast. It's very entertaining and down to earth, not cheesy like most. Thank you. We try to be cheesy. and, and we, we don't try and be cheesy. I mean, no. Yeah, that's right. We, we don't try and be tre cheesy. We're just us. You know, we're like yeah. two weird people that are just like, we're into this. There's there's and two modes that I have when we do the podcast. Like, I want to tell you guys this story. And when I do that, I just want to be as, fa as factual as possible. And I want to read your stories to you. And we That's definitely it. like sharing our own personal weird quirks right. and not like cool My Hero Academia quirks, but like weird things. I don't get it. Um, I don't watch it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, and we always like to remind people we're not historians. We're not scientists. We're yeah. not um, academics that are like, this is what we do. 
We're just people um, who know how to research pretty well. well. Yeah, and we just like to have fun, and we like to chat with you guys and make all these new friends that are into weird, creepy crap. It's awesome. It is. It's super fun. Like, um, it's the Wednesday is stressful for me because I'm doing all this running around trying to get everything ready for the show, and then once the show starts and we're broadcasting, I'm like, cool, now I can relax, which is just so weird because you figure it would be the exact opposite of that, where it's like the stress builds up until the show starts, and then it's like, oh, God, no. Yeah. But it's really not. I'm just super chilled out because it's like you guys are all super cool and super supportive. And especially the people who watch us live, you guys are great. So Yeah. And you know what's funny is normally I don't shop for Halloween. I really don't shop for Halloween very much. Other normally than Normally she is balls deep in Christmas right I'm now. I'm balls deep in Christmas. But um, because we're doing this podcast and because I get to share my love of Halloween and creepy stuff and adorably Halloween themed products... Um, I got to go to Target shopping, hanging out in the Halloween section, and I cannot tell you guys how happy it makes me when I'm walking around, and there's just this mom with all her little kids, and the mom's just like, I love Halloween. You know what I mean? It's just like so cute to see these. I've not really uh, met many people who say that they don't like Halloween, to be honest with you. I hated Halloween for a really long time. What happened? Uh, My birthday's Halloween, so no one cared about my birthday. So what a change you oh you're so sweet <laughs> okay i've always been i've always been about making sure people feel special on their birthdays like okay. that's just an, an important thing to me like everyone should have a cake blow out candles and be saying to on their birthday and if you can go to like their favorite restaurant or just hang out and have fun like that's just something i feel i feel like if i'm involved in someone's life like i should give them that on their birthday if i can you know what i mean so you're so cute Aww. okay so uh it continues thanks again for letting me share i would love to know what you think um it's an awesome story you said that you had a lot more we would love to hear all Definitely, your stories yes. um i know it's been like two months but we hope you're still listening <laughs> yeah fingers crossed and uh, so thank you so much crystal it's awesome yeah thank you so much for sending that in everyone that sends us stuff we appreciate it everyone who thinks about sending us stuff we appreciate it everyone who doesn't send us anything but you guys listen we appreciate you too so it's just a lot of appreciation all around So this is the last one that I have for the night. It is also my longest one, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's uh, long, and it's titled Story. Uh, Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. Uh, My name is Albert. I'm going to leave out the last name. We could include it. We don't have to leave it out, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it out. Cool. Uh, Sorry if this is unorganized and the punctuation is off. I'm typing this on the go and on a phone, so please bear with me. No problem. Oh, speaking of bears, I'd also like to point Uh. out that last week on the show, I wore a Mitchell Trubisky jersey. And he had the best performance by a Chicago Bear quarterback since like 1946. And I Six also touchdowns. had him on my yeah. fantasy team. And Robin team. started him in her fantasy team and got all those fucking points. Yeah, 41 points. 41 fantasy points. I did this whole thing where I talked about how good the Bears might be this year. And like I must have inspired her because she picked up the people I wanted to get. I, yeah, I picked up Trubisky and, and, the, Bears defense. and the defense. And they rocked it this past week. They've been doing fairly well. So, so very happy about yeah. that. My Cubs didn't fare so well last oh, night. Oh, crap. There's a... Oh, no. Woo! I thought today was Thursday. I was about to freak out. It's Wednesday. We got time yep. to set that lineup. So that was some fantasy football talk really fast. But let's get back to this story. Uh, They're typing it on a phone. We're bearing with them. That's what threw me off. It all started when I was 12 and I was cleaning the Seattle or the Settlers Park nursing home. I was a part time janitor at 12 years old. Holy shit. I was a part time janitor for a job that I had under the table. My first day there. I was going to say like that's some child labor law shit. shit. Yeah. My first day there, they were telling me everybody and all the patients that I have to look out for. Sure, some of them picked on me, but I wasn't going to back out my first Boom. day. Makes sense. Settlers Park was a pretty good sized nursing home. If you were if you were to get in the helicopter and fly above it, it would look like a square. It would look like a square of zero, with this. That what this? Okay. It looks I don't know like what a that big means. square donut. A big square donut. So a square. Yeah, but with a hole in the center. Okay, so it l- would look like a square of zero. With the center being a green grass type area. So it has like a greenery in the middle of it. Okay. Yeah. It was also separated in the two parts. Into two parts. The outside of the circle was for normal patients. Uh, shout out to... I'm going to let you say that one. Aka, uh, Akasuna no Kairi. Cool. Thank you for Akasuna subscribing. No we appreciate it. Yeah. It, it means I don't know. <laughs> no, okay. no one can hear that. Okay. We're so. doing this for the audio people. Oh, so sorry. you have to describe that out loud. No, um, you're not going to? Okay, wait, I guess I'll keep moving on what? then. What you just did, your pantomime that you oh, just yeah. did. Oh, yeah. Kill me. I don't oh know how to God. read. 
This has just gone off the rails. It's fucking garbage now. You're garbage. Sutler's Park was a pretty good sized nursing home. Uh, if you're in the helicopter, it's a fucking square circle. We got that. Okay. It was also separated into two parts. The outside of the circle was for normal patients that were allowed to leave if they please. But the middle was for the memory care side. I had the unlucky job of cleaning up the memory care side. That sucks. Uh, so I had to be given a list of things that I would have to do in case something happened on the memory care side. I was not alone. There was at least two CNAs there, but they usually stayed at the front desk while I had to go around cleaning floors and window seals. Most of the time, I was out of their vision. The memory care side was also locked in was also locked in from the other side and the outside of the middle. So it just sounds like it's on lockdown. Okay. The worst things that they told me I would have to look out for was pretty straightforward and what you would think. Sometimes patients would get up and go around confused of where they were and who they were. If that happened, you were to call a CNA on a walkie-talkie, that was the usual. That sounds like a really hard job for a 12-year-old. Yeah, I'm just like, why would a 12-year-old have a job uh. as a janitor in this place? This is crazy. Like, get a job at, like, someplace else that will hire... Why do you have a job at 12? I, yeah. Oh, well, shit. family circumstances, sometimes you can't help it, and you have to take care of your family, and that's just what you got to do, you know? But that's really hard for a 12-year-old to do. And yeah. I'm sorry, but this place giving that much work I to mean, a kid. I mean, he probably really... They probably really wanted this job. They were probably the ones that were talking this place into giving them the job under the table, you know? Yeah. All right. One thing that caught me off guard was a diagnosis of a disease called sundowners. I've totally heard of this. Many people have heard of sundowners from the horror movie, from the horror movie, The Visit, but I never watched it. Um, it's good, actually. The Visit? We've seen it like three times. We have? Yeah. The people go to see their grandparents who have sundowners. Oh! Yeah, yeah, don't spoil it for everyone. Oh, man, that movie is good. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> Sundowners is a state of wh in which your body acts like it's awake when it's dark, but you're asleep. I'm not the one... I'm not the best describing it, but pretty much imagine sleepwalking on crack. Most cases aren't serious, but the one I'm going to tell you about is... Cool. The first night there, I wasn't alone. I had another person with me. Uh, she was an older lady and was telling me about all the things that happened and will probably happen to me while I cleaned up there. Nothing really crazy besides a woman in 13A. Of course it was 13. We drove by in the cart we had that carried a trash can and other cleaning supplies. Okay, she I know what they're talking about. Okay, me too. Uh, she stopped in front of the door, and then I looked and saw it had a bolted lock on the outside. Um, beside the door, the room number and the name of the people who were sleeping in the room. Most people have two in one. Most... Most people have two people in one room, but this room only had one. Okay. Okay. I'm not allowed to give the name, obviously, uh, of the elderly woman who slept in the room. So for the story, I'll call her Crystal. <laughs> that sucks because we got an email from someone named oh, Crystal. Oh, that's episode. hilarious. I asked the other girl who was cleaning with me why we stopped and why there was a bolt holding her door shut. She looked me dead in the eyes and held up her hand to signal for me to stop oh, talking. Oh, my goodness. Okay. At this moment, I became a little frightened and almost as if Crystal could sense my fear. There was a thud on the door <gasps> that was so loud, I jumped back and knocked over the cart. Oh, my the goodness. The other girl I was cleaning with didn't even flinch. She just looked at me and said, no matter under what circumstances, never open the door. That's so what? Fucked up. Yeah, that sounds very illegal. Uh, as soon as she finished the sentence, there was scratching. I asked why ah! she picked up the I asked why and she picked up the cart and told me she was the worst case of sundowners. She didn't go into what it was that okay. Crystal did when she got out, but she looked at me and said afraid. She looked at me sad and afraid, so I never asked. After I was done cleaning for the night and I was saying goodbye to the CNAs at the desk, they called me over and showed me Crystal's book and it said Extreme Sundowners Violence which I took it as when she experiences darkness, she turns extremely violent. Oh, man. That's, yeah, that's really rough. Super like, creepy. Oh, my gosh. That's really rough. The next night I was by myself because the lady that I worked with called in sick. I had no problem doing it by myself. I said hi to CNAs and then started to clean. I noticed an alternative man walking around in the hall outside of 13A's room. I called the CNAs to come get him and take him back to the room, and they did just that. Without checking the door of 13A's room. That's super fucking creepy. I think that's foreshadowing, obviously. Oh, God. I continued to clean until I got to the door and noticed the bolt was not locked. A sense of fear and shiver... A sense of fear shivered down my spine and made me go for my walkie-talkie. But as soon as I picked it up, I heard a big thud and then the door flew open. Fuck that. Fuck I was face-to-face -face -face with an elderly oh, no. woman that was surprisingly buff. Oh, no. And about 5'10". Surprisingly Holy buff. Holy shit, just like She's a ripped... She's bigger than me. 
She's like groundskeeper Willie. Just kicks the oh fucking door down. Oh my gosh. Uh, I was 12. I was 5'3 and 95 pounds. Holy shit. Oh, man. She had her eyes closed the entire time and was dressed in a white nightgown. She had a sling over her right arm, but she didn't seem to mind it because her right arm was completely straight. I pressed the button to talk to the walkie-talkie, and then Crystal charged me. <gasps> the walkie-talkie flew out of my hand and hit the wall. The cleaning... I think it's the cleaning cart. rolling. The cleaning rolling bench knocked over, and my glass water bottle shattered. I hit my head hard and screamed. The oh CNA God. heard my scream. It actually says cream. The CNA heard my <laughs> scream you. and started to walk down the hallway only to see an elderly elderly woman beating a 12-year-old boy. Keep in mind there was video cameras videotaping the whole thing. Crystal opened her eyes as I opened mine and I saw her start to cry. That's super oh, sad. No. Crystal walked over to the broken bottle and picked up a long piece of glass, then turned to me and charged I pulled up my arms to cover my face to protect myself and felt a sharp pain as the glass went into my arm. She then pulled the glass out of my arm, got up, and pointed it at the CNAs that stopped about 10 feet from me. Oh, my goodness. Crystal looked back down at me and then said some things that I couldn't understand. Then she screamed, I will hunt you until you die and you will never live with happiness. Dude, what? Jesus Christ. Oh, this is so much. Crystal then took the sharp piece of glass and cut her throat. Shut up. Blood spilled over my pants and then the dead body of Crystal fell on top of me with blood drooling over me. The whole time I was crying and bleeding from my arm. After that, the CNAs got her off of me and then took me to the hospital. In parentheses, I couldn't get the video of the altercation that occurred because of a privacy agreement I signed so I could get the job. The photo of my wrists, the photo of my wrist is the scar from the glass. Dude. So there's a photo apparently attached to this email that I'm totally going to have to pull up. Uh, I quit the job oh. after I got out and spent six months in therapy. After the six months, in th <sighs> six months in therapy, I was apparently ready to be back in school. School is rough, but I understand most of it because I was ahead of the class. I never really had the best family, but the one person I could count on was my grandmother. She was really tough, but one, but she only had one eye, and her fight with breast cancer left her with one breast. But she beat it. One day while at her house, I was asked if I would go upstairs and grab her glasses. I said, of course. Uh, Grandma and I were halfway up the stairs when I looked up and saw a black figure looking back at me. Um, my grandmother came the in the stairs and said, wait, you can see him? <laughs> what the fuck? I said yes with tears running down my face, and my grandmother came up to me and hugged me. She then told me that it's nothing to be afraid of, and he was a protector. Oh my the black God. figure then gave more of a pleasant feeling and then vanished. My grandmother was a stone cold bitch. In parentheses, her, her words. words. <laughs> she said she's she's seen spirits her whole life and uh. only told me. That's just how the sentence says. She's, she's seen spirits her whole life and only told me. Uh, P.S. She is still alive. She then told me I was to share the same gift as her. I felt better and went home. That's a weird thing to feel better about. Uh, it was close to the end of the school. I think we're just going through a bunch of different stories here because this is kind of all over the place. But yeah. I guess we'll just keep going with it. Uh, it was close to the end of the school year and I was at a friend's house alone with a couple of friends. Okay. So the, that's the second time. <laughs> We've been challenged by the word alone. So alone okay. means there's no one else with you. Um, so you're with a couple of friends. I was 13 at the time, and my friend stole some beers from the fridge. At 11.30 p.m., my friend brought out his family's Ouija board. It's not just that you have a Ouija board. It's that you have a family Ouija board. We decided to play with it, and everything turned to shit. We asked it if there was a spiritual presence there. It shot to yes. Oh, my God. Why? I then asked it, where are you? Which isn't something we've heard people ask before. Uh, and all the beer bottles dropped well, usually... on their side and pointed to me. No way. Six fucking half full beer bottles fell over and pointed at me. That's super fucking creepy. I then asked if they could show themselves and they said, quote, soon. What the fuck? See, when I hear Ouija board stories, what goes through my head is they get these super elaborate answers like, it takes so long to spell that shit. Like, how would you even know where to put the spaces? But when you get an answer like soon, like, that sounds more like a Ouija board answer it's doable. to me. So, two weeks later, my dad was getting mad at me and decided that he wanted to beat my ass. It wasn't out of the norm, but he seemed more pissed than normal. He started with a punch and then threw me to the ground. I looked at him and his eyes rolled in the back of his head and he said, soon. What? Then kicked me in the face. I knew in my soul something was wrong, and I crawled to my dresser where I kept a small pocket knife and grabbed it. 
Then he picked me up by the back of my throat and threw me to the other side of the room. He then got on top of me and started to choke me. His eyes were closed and he had a smile that has burned into my mind. I cried and thrust my knife into his head? Holy shit. This is really intense. Where is this? I'm going to go ahead and request someone check and see if this is a creepypasta because this is just like all over the place. Uh, the smile left his face and tears filled his eyes. He then got off of me, then left. So you stabbed him in the head. Okay, it says, okay, I missed a sentence here. I'm sorry. He did not die and the knife bounced off of his skull. Okay, so he probably just got cut. He then snapped back and opened his eyes. The smile left his face and tears filled his eyes. He got off oh of me, God. then left. I laid there trying to catch my breath. He called the cops. In his testimony, he had no recollection of what he had done. The only thing he remembers is me stabbing him. I was too embarrassed to say the truth, so I just said what my dad said. I also said that I got the marks in a previous fight I got in earlier that day, but it was undecided because I never left the house that day. Uh, this the is police insane. report is the part of the paper I sent you. So we apparently have that too. You can say my full name, but only say, I'm not going to say your full name. Um, that's if you read it on your podcast. P.S. I will send you the police report when I find it in the morning. Okay. Uh, sorry if this is extra long, but everything I said is the truth. I am almost 18 years old now and have experienced things I cannot explain. I have collected data and will give you more and more samples of weird things that happened to me throughout time. I just feel like this is a long one and the start of it all. That's so intense, That dude. is super like, fucking what? intense. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was it was creepy. It it's was like building. Anxiety. <laughs> and then when this fucking old woman cuts her own throat, I was just like, what so the fuck is going on? Oh, man, dude. That one's super intense. Okay, so, um, so yeah, there's a picture that was sent to us. It looks like of a forum that has like a gouge that's been taken out of it and also a line straight down the middle. So that is, yeah. that's definitely a scar. That's, it is a scar. I'm like looking at my wrist right now. Right, is that there on mine? Um, no, yeah, that's really intense, dude. Yeah. Like, wow. Um, we are sorry you had to go through that. That's incredible. Yeah, and just FYI, I'm not calling for a uh, a check on the whole creepypasta thing because I don't believe you. It's just so intense and so many different stories all at once that it's like, I feel like I need to do my due diligence on this. This reminds me of some shit that I would research and then later have to check and see if I can, like, explore the validity behind the claim. So thank you for sending that in because yeah. that shit is all very intense and, like, very traumatizing experiences for someone to experience. Especially, like, what went through what you went through at 12 and 13 and whenever your dad attacked you as well. Like, that's just fucking bizarre. All of it. So, okay. I guess we're going to go ahead and move into the uh, oh, next wait. one. Uh, anyway, so, hey, y'all. Hillary here. Hello. Hello, Hillary. Um, I'm from Texas, so the y'all seemed appropriate. Also, I'm at work and I have nothing to do, so I figured I'd get paid to tell you my spooky story. Nice. Smart um, move. Very smart. Very nice. Uh, okay, so moving on. Where do I begin? Uh, I live in San Marcos. I'm not sure where that is. I'm so sorry. I'm going to um, guess it's in Texas. Yeah, it's in Texas, but where in Texas? Is it know. towards the coast? Sounds like it'd be towards the coast. Really? Uh, Why? I, I don't is that know. sand on it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Is San Antonio towards the coast? It's south. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. I just know there's north, east, west, um, and south Texas. So. And there's these apartments that I stayed in that I am convinced were haunted as hell. I'm just going to tell you one of my scariest experiences. Um, I got home from work and tried getting into my room only to realize I had locked myself out. It was student living, so everyone has their own key to their room. I was so annoyed because um, I was about to call the maintenance man late one night and get charged $50 to get into my own damn That's room. That's fucking bullshit. So I chose to wait till the morning to casually bump into the maintenance man <laughs> and get him to open my door nice. with my charm. That's smart. That's super hilarious. Oh my God, how you get doing? It? That's super hilarious, Hillary. Hilarious. Oh yeah, ah. I guess. You split that <laughs> word up where it didn't sound like Hillary and then you're like, get it? Hilarious. Oh, Whatever. I was like, me. air? What are you talking about? It's all about? the coffee. My brain's not working. All right. So at the time, I had two roommates, Allie and Alexis. Uh, Alexis was out of town, and she generally left her door unlocked, um, <laughs> and Allie had her boyfriend staying over. I hated Alexis, so I wasn't about to go sleep in her room. <laughs> oh, shit. Caddy. Right. <laughs> um, never room with random roommates. It's a trap. <laughs> I never had to room with anyone in college. I've never, never had like, roommates. You never lived on campus? Mm-mm. No, that would probably one why. too expensive. Yeah, it's um, it's very very expensive. Two, I could just drive, just get a cheaper apartment. I, yeah, I would much rather get an apartment just off campus than get a dorm that costs like more than that, and you just get like a fucking cardboard cutout of yeah. a room. It's so just um, crazy expensive for that shit. So that left me with a sofa. 
I'm sitting up on the edge of the sofa listening to music, scrolling through Twitter by myself, laughing at about three in the morning. Um, I realize that's creepy. Trust me, I just love Twitter. <laughs> I, it's hard for me to keep up with Twitter because I have the certain people that I will follow on Twitter and I will follow um, pretty regularly. And then I follow a whole bunch of other people that I'll see a tweet every once in a while. And I, I can't do the reading every single tweet a person has said. I can't do that. I get annoyed with Twitter because like I will like we manage the scariest uh, social media stuff. So I'll put stuff up from the social media stuff sometimes. And when I'm whenever I'm on Twitter, I'll post something from the scariest thing. Then like later on, I'll switch to my personal Twitter and I'll be scrolling through my feed and I'll see stuff from like today, from yesterday, from two or three days ago. And I won't see the thing I posted from scariest. You got to press the house. No, no, no. Like, I'm talking about my feed, my activity feed from my personal one. It won't show me the things that I'm posting from something I know that I'm following. So I can't help but feel like, what else am I missing? Because I'm following, like, a lot of people. And I only ever see, like, the same six or seven people, like, posts. Which is super fucking annoying. Because, like, I'll see stuff from, like, ten days ago. And then if I go and check one specific person's Twitter, it'll be like, oh, they've tweeted, like, 20 times. And I haven't seen any of these in my activity feed. I can't stand that shit. You got to do the notification thing where they'll send you text messages. I have that set up for just about everyone that I want to follow. I get no text text messages no i only get text Twitter. messages from major nelson uh <laughs> major nelson the xbox uh fan fest dude right and bethesda and that's about it I oh have, and scary of I course have notifications from like four or five people and i never get messages i get notifications from instagram which is why i'm mostly on instagram because that seems to work for me so. yeah i use instagram a lot more i'm glad we actually got uh, an instagram well. up and running so yeah we need to start posting more we have so many pictures that y'all have sent us of like uh, omen babies and i think we're gonna start posting i'm gonna start posting the pictures of all the little cats and dogs cool. and we have yeah stuff. we have a lot of them it's just so. weird for us to like post pictures of your pets but yeah. i guess if we give you like reference or if we like refer to you like so and so sent this to us like here's a picture of an omen baby like that could work maybe i don't know we'll see um okay moving on all of a sudden i feel something tug on my hair usually i can talk myself out of things like it's just in your head stupid so i blow it off then I feel another tug, this time with more force. At this point, I'm terrified to even move. So logically, the only way to make the entity leave me alone is to throw my blanket over my head. That's funny. I do that. And then only moments later, I hear scratching at the edge of the sofa where my head is. No. Maybe it was just gnawing. Mm. Maybe it wasn't scratching. Maybe it was trying to I don't eat know. your head. I don't know. I can literally hear the leather on the sofa. I seriously have no idea what to do next. I was shaking. I turned my music all the way up and then I'm there for a second on the verge of tears when I feel the fucking sofa get yanked so hard. Okay. You can bet I nope the fuck out of there and ran to Alexis's room, which was in fact unlocked. This was the only time living with her was beneficial to my life. That's hilarious. Anyways, I got into her bed and slept with the light on, but I could still hear slight scratches on the door. Then after a while, it just stopped. Keep in mind, this whole time, Allie is in bed with her boyfriend, all safe, and I'm over here having a damn heart attack. <laughs> the next morning, I went to go check the sofa, and there were long scratch marks along where I heard them. We have no pets, because what broke college student can afford a pet fee? And so to this day, I have no idea what that was or why it was so bored that it just had to fuck with me. You can share this on the pod if you want. And uh, I have plenty more stories to share, but I just like to say that y'all make my work days bearable and I love how witty you are. I keep on creeping. Infinite hugs, Hillary. Thank you so much, Hillary. That's such a crazy story. You scared the shit out of Robin. That was um, a really good story. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, send your other stories that you have too. We would love to read them. Um, it's just awesome. Yeah, that was yeah. super creepy. Stressful. Sorry. I like, I don't know. I like it when they're short and like super like, this is what happened. And then it just fucking explodes out of nowhere. Cause like whenever I see a shorter email, I'm just like, okay, like this is going to be pretty basic. And then they blow our fucking minds. That one was really, really blow good. Blow our minds. So during the month of September, uh, the wonderful viewers on Twitch were able to donate stuff to us. Right now, if you watch us on YouTube, we don't have it set up where you can send us, send us like money because YouTube makes you be like a partner first. It's fucking weird. Um, but Twitch right away, you can set it up where if your audience wants to send you money, they can, and the message will pop up on screen. Most of you guys watching from Twitch already know that, and we set up a donation for September for $100. So if we mm -hmm. made $100 for the month of September, 
but we're going to do a giveaway for and everyone who donated. We definitely blew that out of the water. Yes, we did. You so. guys are amazing. Top donor was Connor. Thank you so much, Connor, for sending all the money you did send. Thank you to everyone for donating. We wound up at like 360% of the goal, so we crushed it. Uh, we're doing another goal for October. I think it's set to 100 or 200. I can't remember what it's set for. Um, but every month when we actually meet the goal, the first show of the following month, we're going to do a spin. And we're going to see uh, for everyone who donated who can win some sweet stuff. So yes. we're going to do stickers. So we're going to do the sticker that's on my laptop here, which is the I hate you with the heart sticker. We're going to do the regular scary sticker. Uh, when we reach out to you, we're going to ask you what your, scar your scariest, what your favorite episode is. We're going to send you the scripts that we use to record it, and we're going to sign them. Uh, and then we're gonna also going to include one other thing that we talked about already on the show that I've almost completely forgotten about now. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be a mystery gift. We'll call it a mystery gift and we'll go from there and it'll, it'll just be something fun. But right now we're going to go ahead and pick the winner. So, oh, okay. There it is. That's everyone who donated to us. So thank you to everyone on that wheel. There was one person who donated one bit, uh, which translates to a penny. And when I was reading online, it said that it's supposed to be set up where the minimum donation is a dollar. So they're not on the wheel. We still want to say, I think it was paved paradise. I still want to say thank you to paved paradise for donating. Every little bit counts. Um, but we decided that the dollar minimum was what we're going to go with for the wheel. So we're going to spin this and then whoever it lands on is going to get that sweet little care package. We'll reach out to you and, and see what we can do about getting that to you right away. Cool. So here we go. I'm going to spin this thing and hopefully it works and then uh, we'll see who wins. So uh, here we go. Doo, doo, doo. Wait, no, that's not the right theme. No, What's it's the not. Wheel of Fortune theme? It's done. It's too late. Keb Keb. Keb Keb is our winner. For the and donation. Keb Thank Keb's you so not much. Here. Where are you, Keb Keb? It's all right. They sent us a donation while they were watching. We really, really appreciate the donation. So, Keb Keb, you're fantastic along with everyone else on that wheel, everyone that watches, everyone, period, associated with our community is amazing. But Keb Keb is our winner. So, we're going to reach out to you, get your information, and try and get that box to you. Okay. So, if you guys want to reach out to us, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can email storytime at scarish.com. You can also go to facebook.com slash scarish podcast and message us. When you're there, please like the page. It really does help us out. You can also join the group from there. Uh, quick shout out to Miss Deezy who just we donated 202 subs. bits. We got a bunch of new subs too. So Hall Lessier subbed. Thank and you so Chessie much. Cat subbed. You guys are awesome. You we guys called are out, so awesome. We called out Chessie Cat. So I want to say thank you to Chessie Cat a second time. And Hall Lessier, thank you so much. We really appreciate everyone yeah. that's joining and, and so joining awesome. in. It's just super, super fun. R2P2 says, Aaron, you're the best. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where was I? I'm going to have to okay. add, chop that one up a little bit. Uh, from there, you can join the Scarish Spooky Friends group if you'd like to. You can post your story there on the uh, group so you can get some instant feedback. If you're looking for another avenue for instant feedback, you can also do it in the Discord. There's usually a link in the group. If not, go to scarish.com, and there should be a link there. It's the Discord logo. It says join us on Discord. It's on the right-hand side. Just click it. It should take you there, and uh, everything should work out, hopefully. If not, just reach out. This will help you. We'll walk you through it. If you have a short story or a topic suggestion you want to send us on Twitter, at ScarishPod use those 280 characters wisely that's pretty much all the ways that you can reach out to us you can also reach out to us on instagram some of you guys have been doing that as well uh and that totally works that's at scarish podcast uh that's pretty much everything for the social media side of things if you guys want to send us donations robin do you want to do those ones or do you want uh, to if you want to do donations go to kofi ko-fi.com slash scariest podcast and if you want to sign up for monthly donations we do have different tiers where i actually mail you physical stuff um if you go to patreon.com slash scariest podcast, um, tiers from $1 all the way up to two fifty. which reminds me, we got our first producer we for did. the show. Um, so Connor is our official show producer. We appreciate it. Um, so shout out to Connor and shout out to Sam, actually. She's at the $50 She's, level as well. Yeah. So thank you so much, guys, for supporting the show so much. It's awesome. We appreciate and, it. For those uh, of you who don't know what the producer tier involves, because the $50 level is the shout out. We do the shout out and we do all the other things for all the other tiers. Each tier you go up, you still get all the stuff previously. But for the producer one specifically, we give you the shout out, I think, every show, if yes, I'm not mistaken. every single show. And then for every single show in the description that I put up that says, like, Robin and Adam talk about blah, 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 blah. Underneath in that, it's going to say produced by or, like, spooky producer or something we haven't, discussed, like, exactly figured out the verbiage of it. But that'll be attached in all the episode descriptions for all time. Because if you're donating money throughout that month, you're helping us produce the show as far yeah, as I'm you concerned. you literally make this show happen. It's just so. like when we get a sponsor and they give us money to run advertisements. And it's usually people that we believe in and we really support. We are going to keep that. And those advertisements are going to run forever on the show because that's money that was donated to help us produce that episode. So thank you so much. If any of you guys are interested, check out patreon.com slash scariest podcast. 
tiers start as low as a dollar, go all the way up to a 250, whatever you guys are comfortable with. If you're comfortable with nothing, that's totally fine. There's a bunch of different ways. Share the show, talk to it about, talk to a friend about it, or just download it and listen to us. We appreciate every bit of support yeah. we get from you guys. We try and make this as fun as possible. We hope you guys enjoyed the live stream tonight. We hope you guys enjoyed it in every way possible. I'm going to try and make sure that for that fun Marvel game, we can include as many people as possible <laughs> in the future. So those are the normal things we do for the sign out. I can't really think if we're missing anything right now. No. Nope. I don't think we I are. I think we're good. So that was story time number 34. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, Thank you so, so much, much for, for joining, joining us. us. Uh, Robin, I'm going to let you go ahead and do the oh. sign out. Keep on creeping on, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.